Stan Jimalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. My video uh, entitled Groundless Antenna evidently elicited quite a bit of interest from one viewer in particular uh, who, uh, because I did not have comments open in that uh, in that particular video, he put his comments in another video. But it had to do with um, field day and using regular antenna or regular uh, stations without RF grounds, without grounding them at all. And, and he was referring especially to uh, field day operations. Uh, he said, I never have grounded my radio during field day at all. And uh, I've gotten out on the air. And uh, of course, these things are all relative. You can operate any ham radio station without any ground, DC, or RF, and it will work, no matter what kind of antenna you use. How well it works is a, a little different story, but uh, he, he said that uh, he wanted to know what constitutes a good RF ground. Is a four-foot ground rod with a, a few uh, little radial wires attached to it good enough? Or do you need something more? Or what do you need uh, for an application like field day in a typical ham radio station so that you have a good RF ground? And I can't really answer that question directly because it, it all depends upon how well you want to get out on the air. Generally speaking, uh, with a regular ham radio station, you're always best to have a good radio frequency ground system at the feed point where the feed line uh, connects to the antenna. In most situations, most ordinary situations where uh, you have any kind of ham radio station uh, that's not out in space or on an aircraft or something like that, and you uh, find that you uh, want to get the best possible performance, a good RF ground will help. And the better the RF ground, the better the signal will be. Um, for example, if you, if you have a field day station, if you pound a four foot ground rod into the ground and let that be your RF ground for your station and connect it right to the radio, you will have, you'll get out on the air. You'll get out even if you don't ground it at all. You'll get out better if you have a good RF ground at the antenna feed point. And uh, that means where the feed line connects to the antenna. And a good RF ground, it's all relative. I'd say an eight foot ground rod uh, with a number of quarter wave length radial wires run along the ground or underneath the ground. They can be insulated or not. It really doesn't matter. And if you're on field day and you have a ground like that, generally speaking, you're going to have the best results. Now, if you if the feed point of the antenna happens to be, say, if you have a dipole up in the air, you obviously can't put your RF ground at the feed point, but you'll put it at the radio, and uh, you'll it'll also offer a good DC ground in that situation. Uh, the better the ground in general, the better the antenna performance in ordinary situations with transceivers or transmitters that have unbalanced outputs or ordinary transmatches and ballon coils and things like that. Uh, 
so I would say always go for the best RF ground that you can unless there's some particular reason that you can't have a, a, a DC ground or an RF ground at all, like you're on an aircraft or something like that. If you can't have uh, a, that kind of situation, you're going to need to have a compromise operation. But uh, say at your home radio station, uh, you have a transceiver in your basement and a transmatch that runs out to uh, your antenna with balanced line running from the transmatch to the antenna and then a random, uh, quote, dipole, unquote, un uh, quote, unquote, connected to that balanced line. You, you would do better to ground your station than not to ground your station. And the better the RF ground, the better the operation, and the better the results will be in ordinary circumstances. And uh, I, as I said before, the minimum in my estimation is an eight foot ground rod and a number of quarter wavelength radials um, underneath the ground or laying on top of the ground. Something to put that thing at RF ground and also for safety purposes, you want to have that radio chassis grounded for electrical as well as RF purposes. Uh, it, it's all, it's a, there are a lot of variables involved here. There are only certain specialized kinds of antennas that really will work well without any ground at all, any RF or DC ground. And I was describing those in the video called Groundless Antenna. So I don't know exactly how to answer you, my friend, other than to say that typically speaking, you're always best off to have a good RF ground and a good DC ground for your own protection, uh, you know, so you don't get electrocuted, and for the performance of your station. Uh, but it'll work even if you don't ground it at all. And, and uh, this viewer noted that, that at field day, he typically hasn't used any ground at all and he's gotten out over the air just uh, what appears to be just fine. But you do better with uh, an RF and DC ground, and the better the ground, the better the results in ordinary circumstances. I don't know really uh, what else to tell you. Uh, I would say when there's any doubt as to whether you need a ground or not, I say go with the ground and put the ground at the most uh, convenient possible place, uh, either at the radio itself or, if possible, at the feed point of the antenna. Uh, so it's all it's all one of these relative things, and. Uh, the specific case of a groundless system is when you can't have in practice an RF or DC ground uh, that's significant, such as on an aircraft or especially on uh, satellites. Handheld radios, how do they get out over the air without being connected to the physical or electrical ground system. The only ground that you get is the capacitance between your the radio and your body and the environment around you. Uh, it, this is all just uh, kind of uh, 
kind of a, one of those things that you can't really specifically answer sometimes. So now that I've answered you, my friend, by saying that I can't answer you, I think I'd probably better uh, <laughs> put a stop to my bad luck and say 73, which means best regards. Watch the video Groundless Antenna again. And if there's any possibility that you can ground your system, do it. Um, otherwise, if you can't, then a groundless antenna system of the design I describe in that video will work the best. So long, that particular little ditty always translates in my native fist to da 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 da.